Selecting furniture is a matter of scale, especially when it's a dollhouse. Miniature furniture is sized for really small spaces. A popular scale is one-twelfth of full-sized furnishings. But as far as attention to detail, there's no need to scale down one's expectations. These are replicas of full-sized antiques, meticulously copied in miniature. This grandfather clock is modeled on an 18th century one, and for the craftsman, no detail is too small. He first measures and cuts numerous components from pear tree wood. This wood's small grain scales down well to make the miniature clock look more authentic. The parts are too thin and small to nail, so he glues them together, beginning with the front of the clock's trunk. He applies the glue sparingly with a tiny brass tool to prevent messy overflow. He installs the sides on the front of the clock trunk. And he adds a substantial looking pear wood base. He spiffs up the front of the base with veneer paneling that's protected by a layer of tape for now. He carves angles and trim to make it fit neatly around the paneling. He now peels away the tape to reveal the swirled burl of the veneer wood, which has been cut from the root of a South Asian tree. He rubs the paneling against sandpaper to smooth its surface and expose more of the wood grain. Once the feet have been installed on the clock, he applies a strip of molding above the trunk. The crisp profile of this lime wood trim is a classic touch. Carving a mini gable with the thin blade of a fret saw is tricky, especially with this intricate design called a swan neck. He sands the edges to finish off the job. The swan neck gable is one of numerous little parts that, when pieced together, form the hood of the clock, which holds the face and clockworks. He joins the hood to the trunk, and with the basic structure now complete, he glues a tiny wooden crest to the center of the swan neck. He tapers it with a surgical scalpel. After staining the clock a deep antique mahogany, he sands it to make it look more authentic. He then brushes on coats of shellac sealer. It both protects the wood and provides a smooth surface for the next finish. After the sealer dries, he sands it a little, and then applies two coats of traditional French polish. This mix of alcohol and shellac gives the cabinetry a high gloss finish. Once it dries, he buffs the wood with wax to enhance the sheen. The clock door, with its exotic veneer, is also stained, polished and waxed. Then, using tweezers, he positions tiny brass hinges on the door. He presses little brass pins into holes in the hinge to secure it to the door. He files the pinheads until they're flush to the hinge. He now dips the pendulum and its weights in acid, which gives them an antiqued finish. He installs them in their compartment in the cabinetry. He now sets the clock upright and paints the back basic black. He inserts a piece of clear acrylic into the opening of the clock hood. Acrylic has a slight wave to it that looks like old glass. This small watch movement is what will make this mini grandfather clock tick. Using double-sided tape, he attaches it to the dial. He fastens the hands to the clockworks shafts. And then he lowers the dial and clockworks into the hood compartment. He signs the back with a paint-filled pen, which makes his signature stand out against the black background. And finally, he glues a tiny tassel to the door handle. Including drying time for the various finishes, it has taken over three days to make this miniature grandfather clock. No small effort, 
but it's the little details that make a difference in a small space. For hundreds of years, dollhouses have been hot property. At first, they were built to entertain the children of the wealthy, but eventually, mass production made these mini mansions widely available, and they continue to be great places for childhood fantasies to reside. Any home building project is all about the details, but the details don't get much smaller than this. These dollhouses are miniature versions of actual homes, made to scale. They take a big sheet of plywood and slice it into smaller pieces. For a consistently accurate job, they use a saw guide, which positions the wood for a specific cut. There's a different guide for each dollhouse part. Using a hot iron, they brand the company name onto a foundation part. This dollhouse will be sold as a kit, and here they demonstrate how to put it together. Back on the production line, they're milling the siding. This machine cuts furrows and wood panels to mimic a clapboard finish. Next, using a router, they cut window and door holes. And now, the walls go up. Because this is a kit, each piece has to be a perfect fit because, unlike a real construction project, they can't do recuts on site. They install the second floor and tape it with ordinary masking tape while the glue dries. And now for the second story. It can take up to 100 hours to paint and assemble all the parts in a dollhouse kit, depending on how elaborate the design is. Next, they raise the roof. This Victorian design has a two-part roof with a tower in the middle. They add weight to apply pressure while the glue dries. This machine's protective cover has been temporarily removed to show its inner workings. They carefully feed in a piece of pine. It cuts the board into little shingles, which fall into a bin below. Once the shingles are stained, they hot glue them to the roof, following a grid that was penciled on in advance. They wrap the roof with tape to stabilize it while the glue dries. Back in the factory, four cutting wheels shape a piece of pine into moldings that will be used for trim on various models. The door now goes on. It's been trimmed with some of the molding we just saw being made. Windows also have some molding details. All this trim has been made on the same machine, using different cutters for the different profiles. This railing is a nice touch, and it will also provide support for the structure. All that's left is the interior decorating. Some people spend a small fortune on this stuff. Tiny toilets, chairs, even full kitchens in miniature. And in this model of President Lincoln's home, the details are historically accurate. 
Now they carefully pack up all the pieces. Soon they'll make some child's dream of home ownership come true. But first, somebody had better read the instructions.